Well, the time is just gone 8.25 a.m. as we continue with the broadcast this morning right here on Salam Media. Now, the problem of Islamophobia has been manifesting itself in more ways than one right across the entire world. And what takes place in other parts around the world, uh, it is clear that uh, it does affect us, it does impact on us as a Muslim ummah, as a Muslim society. And uh, recently, we've learned about Sweden and about Islamophobia manifesting itself in Sweden. And uh, these are sometimes countries that uh, we uh, don't pay a lot of attention to, but uh, it should be of concern, and rightly so. And uh, an initiative, which I must say has been a wonderful initiative on the part of the United Ulma Council of South Africa to go and meet with the Swedish ambassador, Hakan Jeholt. And uh, this is the reason why we are talking this morning to our respected, our honorable Molana Yusuf Patel, who is the United Ulama Council of South Africa's Secretary General. Molana, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khairan so much for your time. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Molana, the point that I had made uh, in my brief introduction. Uh, there are genuine concerns, there are huge concerns on the part of Muslims here in South Africa with developments that take place around the world and particularly when it involves Islamophobia. Uh, correct. As you pointed out earlier, that uh, what happens in one part of the globe impacts on every other part of the globe. Uh, globalization has shrunk the world into some kind of global village. So what happened in Sweden on the 21st of January, where a, a, a right-wing extremist burned the Quran in front of the Turkish uh, embassy, impacts on the uh, approximate 1.9 billion Muslims around the world. It is not simply uh, a statement against uh, the Muslims living in Sweden, but it is a deliberate provocation, uh, you know, uh, against or, or it's, it is offensive rather to 1.9 billion Muslims around the world. It is also offensive and disturbing to people of other faiths or even of people of no faiths at all. By and large, most decent people abhor these acts and they do not dignify it with attention or worse, justification. Okay. Molana, also looking at, uh, you know, Sweden is just one example of uh, Islamophobia manifesting itself uh, in many parts of the world, and it takes place in various forms. But we see in those parts of the world, uh, particularly we've seen what has happened also in Denmark as well, that uh, the symbols of Islam, the noble Quran, has become a target uh, in more ways than one. And we see it right across entire Europe. And at some point in time, we need to say enough is enough. And let's just go back now to uh, this meeting that Uksa has had with uh, the ambassador, uh, the message that needed to be conveyed, and also at the same time uh, uh, articulating our position in terms of how we feel about these developments. Jazakallah. So the primary purpose and objective of the meeting was to register our condemnation of the burning of the Quran. Uh, there seems to be a little political world to consider the burning of the Quran to be a hate crime. The burning of the Quran, in our, our, our view, is a symbolic call for violence against Muslims. Uh, hate speech laws prohibit threats or expressions of contempt for persons based on several factors including religious belief. So our message was that the burning of the Quran is motivated by anti-Muslim bigotry and is carried out by individuals 
who have a history of taking part in provocative acts aimed at antagonizing and harassing uh, Muslims. Failure to tackle such incidents uh, creates an environment in which Islamophobia becomes even more normalized and results in a hostile and uh, a dangerous environment for Muslims. The individual that carried out this act seems to reserve his right-wing racism and bigotry exclusively for Muslims. His and the political party that he rep uh, represents appear to de be devoid of any pol uh, you know, policy uh, or even an ideological persuasion. They appear solely uh, to direct the hate against uh, Muslims. Uh, what we did bring out to the ambassador is that if we're going to refer and justify such acts under freedom of expression, uh, what we really do is that by framing it as, uh, you know, uh, free speech, it depicts the right-wing extremist as a critic of Islam rather than an open Islamophobe whose hate for Muslim and for, uh, and for Islam is obvious. So burning the Quran is also a uh, blatant contradiction of the democratic values of tolerance, the liberty of conscience, and free speech. The uh, ambassador responded by saying that currently there is debate in the corridors of power whether to incriminate the uh, extremist on a uh, hate uh, crime. Uh, it is obvious that he is he has denigrated a significant number of uh, citizens in Sweden. Sweden, he has, uh, it has contributed to tensions, etc. So there is uh, currently, as we speak, there is debate whether the judiciary should view this uh, through the prism of a hate crime rather than free speech. The, he also, his response also included an appeal uh, uh, not to label the people, the entire community of Sweden or the country of Sweden as extremist uh, Islamophobes. Uh, he says uh, most people coexist very, very peaceful, uh, peacefully across the religious divide. And therefore, it would not be correct to assume that this is the government position or it is a government-endorsed act of blasphemy. Gee, Molana, uh, you know, I can understand uh, that, uh, you know, the response from the ambassador, but uh, this is uh, somewhat of a problem because as Muslims, uh, many times we caught between a rock and a hard place mm -hmm. because, you know, while this debate is going on on what charges need to be brought against this uh, perpetrator, uh, hiding behind what is called a secular so-called democracy, uh, freedom of expression, freedom of speech. And many times these are the arguments that are presented that it is a freedom of uh, expression and a freedom of speech so they can do what they want to irrespective of what the consequences Oh. Yes, I think what you referred to a little earlier is very, very significant. Where you spoke of the banning of the burqa or the banning of minarets, not only, uh, you know, generally in uh, Euro Europe. And I think uh, the, uh, a critical difference between, say, South Africa and the rest of Europe is that in South Africa, there is a tendency or a call for all citizens across the religious divide to integrate 
into broader society. However, in Europe, uh, the position is very, very different. There, the demand is assimilation, not integration. So they demand that you dress like them, you behave like them, you speak like them, uh, and they, hence you see the ban on the burqa, you see the, uh, the ban on the building of minarets uh, or masajid, etc. Uh, that it goes clearly against the idea of assimilation. And this is creating the, uh, you know, the tensions that we see, especially in Europe. Yes, and also Molana, you know, what this has is it has a potential and it has in the past where it's given rise to even more violent forms of Islamophobia. Uh, the burning of the Quran, the banning of the Burqa is one. But what happens is we see an effect right across uh, Europe and also in many other parts around the world. You know, you spoke about minarets and for instance, if we look at India, the Islamophobia has taken uh, in the form that is extremely violent. People have been killed, people have been burnt alive, massages have been burnt, people have been prevented from reading Salah. So what I'm saying is, you know, it starts off, yes, the burning of the Quran, they would, the banning of the Burqa, but it easily has got the potential and, uh, and, and it's been with disastrous consequences for many Muslims across uh, a number of parts around the world. Absolutely. We must recognize the dangers of normalizing acts of hatred in the name of uh, uh, safeguarding free speech. And we must seek accountability from governments. Otherwise, they will uh, risk losing, uh, you know, uh, well-meaning uh, friends. They, it'll compromise coexistence and it will normalize uh, hate crime acts. Yes, Molana. Uh, unfortunately, Molana, time is of the essence and uh, we have got a full program and, you know, would have loved to engage a lot more because I think this is something, uh, this is a topic that requires a lot more discussion. But inshallah, at some point in time, we definitely will uh, revisit this discussion. But once again, you know, obviously the United Ulama Council needs to be commended for this initiative to start yes. off this type of dialogue. So at the very least, uh, these governments become aware that uh, we are not blind to the fact of what is actually taking place around the world. And hopefully that is a message that will be conveyed to their governments. Jazakumullah for the time and the opportunity. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Uh, Secretary General of uh, the United Ulama Council of South Africa with us this morning. We're going to go for a quick break. We'll be back.